looks like we have 30 people today, so that's exciting. Um, and all right. So this is the first cohort for Introduction to Statistical Learning Using R. Um, this book has been, uh, well, second edition came out this summer and people were waiting for that second edition to do a book club. So I'm not surprised that we have quite a bit of a crowd here today. I have not read this one yet. So um, this could be exciting for me as well. Um, so, all right, let's get started. Um, so the general idea, if you haven't done one of these clubs already, is each week a volunteer presents a, a chapter or part of a chapter from the book. Um, I highly recommend volunteering to do that. That is by far the best way to actually learn the material because, you know, you've got a little bit of responsibility attached to it. Um, usually presentations are like a review of the material, um, some discussion, and um, like a demonstration of what's in the chapter that's general for all the book clubs. This one actually has like exercises. So I th think that might become a common thing that we kind of go through the exercises at the book club. Um, we will see how that goes. I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. Uh, we have a GitHub repository for this book, which is, that's what that link up here is if you come to the book. Um, and uh, the idea is to create like a shared set of notes that each future cohort can also use. Um, if you're not familiar with GitHub, that's fine. We can help walk you through that. You don't need to be familiar with GitHub in order to present. Um, and then also, as it said, when you joined, I think it had the message that uh, the meetings are recorded and we post them on the YouTube channel. Usually we have um, effectively like an invisible cohort, like another group is watching the videos and kind of, you know, they might comment in the channel, um, things like that, but they aren't necessarily at the meeting. All right. Uh, I guess before I move on, any questions about that general, you know, how the meetings are going to work? Like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about for this book specifically how I think it'll work, but the general idea. Right. Um, John? Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask, uh, how do we uh, sign up for these uh, presentations? So with this many people, um, I'm probably gonna set up a, an actual form, which I haven't done yet. Um, if we have fewer people, usually I will just ask at the end of the meeting, who wants to present next week and we'll decide that way, but um, we might need a little bit more organization than that for, the, for this one. Um, there, So there are 13 chapters and I suspect, like I say in here, we're gonna aim for a chapter a week, but I suspect we'll end up doing about two weeks per chapter. Um, we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah. So yes, we, uh, someone um, basically went where I'm going with this. Uh, was it Kim? Thank you. That we might do like two people per chapter. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Like we're going to, we are definitely going to be discovering how this book works as a book club. I know it can be like a two semester course that uses this book. So you know, a chapter a week might be a bit much. Um, chapter every two weeks will probably be about right, I think. So I think we'll probably do two weeks each chapter. Um, more on, the, on that in a second. We are focusing on the second I've edition. Got a question, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I had another question. Yeah, just about the timings in terms of these meetings. How long do you think they usually last? And if you're presenting, how long should you kind of, how much of this meeting is going to be like? Right. The presentation bit? Um, that is an important part to answer that we are uh, doing one hour meetings. Um, I should, probably should have specified that in the, uh, you know, in the setup and everything. We can technically go a little long, but I try to keep it to um, pretty close to exactly one hour. Um, if it goes too long, it starts to go into another book club's time and we only have one paid account, so we can't do that. Um, and also just, you know, for people to be able to schedule things. So it should be one hour. So your presentation probably wants to be like 20 minutes, half an hour max. So this discussion or... or yeah. Um, 
I would say probably aim for about a half hour. I, I will say the other book clubs I've done, I haven't like I haven't practiced or anything, so I haven't always been sure how long it'll be. And it seems to mostly work out. Like um, if we have to stop halfway through, we have to stop halfway yeah. through. Not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, aim for probably about a half hour of presentation, and then we can talk about it um, right. as needed, or you know, as the questions come up. Um, so yeah, we will be using the second edition. Um, I haven't compared it to the first edition, but I think they have made a number of changes. So I highly recommend you, you can download it on the website, um, statlearning.com. Uh, we'll be using that second edition. All right, so as we were just talking about, I should have put these slides in the other order. Um, it's built for two semesters. We're going to, you know, quote unquote, try for one chapter a week, but I really don't think that's going to happen. I think very likely what we'll do is we'll do one week is kind of go over the chapter, and then the next week is go through the exercises. Um, or if it makes more sense, do like chapter and some of the exercises, and then the rest of the chapter and the other, rest of the exercises. We will see how that plays out as as we go through it. Um, and yeah, as someone said in the chat that the chapter two is a lot. I think all of the chapters are kind of a lot. There are 13 chapters. Um, yeah, I, so I think the goal should be review of the chapter in week one. We'll discuss it, talk about all the things that were confusing, whatever, and then we'll do review of the exercises in week two. Um, that said, we'll see how it kind of works when you try to present it. Maybe the chapters are too long to really talk about in one week. Um, so we'll see how that works. And um, something that we did with uh, the last book club that I ran, we, we went no matter what. So let's say the person who is going to present has a, you know, a sick kid and they can't show up, or um, we've had people that had a, a meeting come up for work or whatever, okay, we will still meet, we will discuss the chapter because at least many of us will have read the chapter. Might not be as formal in that case, but it keeps the, the meetings going. And especially when we have a group this big, um, we don't, you know, we don't want to screw up everyone's schedules. So we will meet, be meeting no matter what, asterisk that if we're running into holidays, you know, we'll discuss that before uh, the week comes up whether or not we're gonna be having that meeting, but we're not gonna decide at the last minute to cancel meetings. Um, there was a question on thoughts of tidy models versus base. Uh, Emil uh, Hvitfeldt wrote or has done like a tidy models conversion of this entire book, um, which I will link in the channel because I can't remember exactly where he has that posted. Um, I, I don't know yet. Like, let's start with what's in the book, but the tidy models versions are nice and neat and clean. But if you're not familiar with the tidy models, it can be very confusing to kind of first starting looking at it. So probably we'll be using uh, the type, the, the R code as it is in the print or you know, whatever, the PDF of the book. Um, again, as we work through things, if people are looking at the tidy model stuff and saying, hey, this is way easier, um, which, it's tidy models is one of those things where once you get over the hump, it's easier. But until you get over the hump, it's way harder, I think. So, um, yeah. Well, and so that it's a big argument. It's a big thing that the tidy the tidy models version of it is designed to stop you from screwing some things up. And so, anyway, I, I don't want to go into the argument. Um, and yes, the argument is overblown. We will start with what's in the book. And if someone is presenting and they're more familiar with tidy models and they present in tidy models, just be ready that not everyone will necessarily know um, that way. Um, and as far as the meeting links in the channel, in our Slack, 10 minutes before each meeting, the, the invitation posts the, the link for the meeting. It is technically the same one every time, but I prefer that people use the link that's in the channel because um, if you join out you know, at the wrong time, it screws everything up. Um, and then also, yes, that link, but then there's also, oops, I'm typing in the chat in theory. Uh, 
I have a redirect set up that you can just go to r4ds.io slash ISLR, and that'll come to this book, and it has all the info about everything. Um, and yes, so there will be, I think there is tidy verse code in the book, but we'll see. Tidy models is the modeling specific thing out of the, um, the tidy, the R studio team. But, okay, I think I am caught up with everything in the chat. So um, I am going over chapter one this week, which it's interesting because there's a, a preface and a chapter one and they um, overlap a little bit. Um, the preface is more about kind of like the construction of whatever, it's where all the thank yous are and all that. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna be talking about chapter one. Um, so as like a personal development thing, uh, Jonathan and I, uh, for work, will be writing learning objectives for this book. And so hopefully before you have to present, we will have the learning objectives done and you can see what we uh, came up with. Um, you can ignore them if you want, but that'll be something we'll be doing. So I wrote these learning objectives that uh, in this chapter, it's trying to teach us to recognize various types of statistical learning. What the heck does that word mean? Um, understand why this book might be useful for you. Uh, we should be able to read mathematical notation that they're going to use throughout the book. Um, we should be able to describe the overall layout of the book. And then we should be able to find the data that they're going to use in examples throughout the book. So it's basically, we should get ready to read the book is what this chapter is about. Um, so first off, what is statistical learning? Uh, chapter two is all about, okay, what the heck does this mean? Um, but basically, they're, they're, it, they divide it into two camps or two, two types that there's supervised learning where you're building a model to predict an output from inputs. So the examples they gave were predicting wage from age, education, and year, or predicting the market direction from the previous five days performance. Um, I think, a, well, a lot of machine learning that you hear about is supervised statistical learning, uh, but there's also unsupervised where we're just trying to find relationships in the data. So we're trying to find clusters within con cancer cell lines. Um, maybe we're trying to find, uh, you know, some sort of structure in the data. Um, do we have any, Thoughts about that before I move on? Okay. So why? Why would you want to read this book? Um, the, the reason they wrote the book, they said, is to facilitate the transition of statistical learning from an academic to a mainstream field. The idea being lots of people um, have a use for this. So let's not make it all just the high level, super hard math version of it, because not everyone needs that. But it is useful for people to actually understand, you know, when you do k-means clustering, what's actually happening. When you, um, you know, use a, uh, a, a neural net, wh what's going on there. And so it's trying to introduce these topics enough that you actually understand them, but not necessarily enough that you could write them from scratch. Like you will be using R packages. You don't need to be able to uh, you know, back propagate a neural net on paper. Um, so it's that in between level. Um, and again, machine learning is used by everyone. So let's all learn enough of it to use it responsibly. Responsibly, I put that asterisk because um, my feeling is, and I guess I don't like I haven't gone into the technical definitions, but like statistical learning is technically the uh, category in that contains machine learning. But like I said, you're not gonna be doing the, any of the learning on paper. So it's all really gonna be machine learning. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on whether those are interchangeable? Cause I'm getting that feeling, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, all right, and then the, the last reason that, you know, the reason that we're doing this club as part of R4DS, um, I will come back to that question in a second, but yeah, the, there's R in this book. And so this will totally make sense for this community to get a, an understanding of this book specifically. So um, so supervised versus unsupervised. The um, output is the supervisor. 
that you are telling this method what the answer is if it's supervised. So you have an actual answer. Um, versus unsupervised is just, hey, go learn something. I don't know what the answer is. So it's, uh, it's like you're letting the machine go play or the technique, go play in the data, find what you can find. To, uh, what patterns are there? I don't know. Versus supervised, I know what the answer is um, for at least some of the data. Now see if you can find a way to predict what that answer will be. And yes. All right, excellent. All right, notation. So they have a big, 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 big section on notation. I do recommend reading through it, but it felt like something we can refer back to if something is confusing later. Um, I did want to say that they, you know, they use n to mean number of observations or rows, and p is the number of variables or features. So that's columns. Um, yes. So back in the questions. Um, all model or in the chat, all models that involve training are supervised, I'm guessing. Think so, kind of. So you can train some unsupervised techniques that it is learning a pattern from the input data, you know, from the data you have. And then what you want to, the reason you train it is you want to find those same patterns in new data. And so you're still training it, even though it's unsupervised, because you want it to find this same thing um, when we talk about principal component analysis for example that you find the principal components in the data like the first data you have and you can kind of set rules so that new data will have the same principal components um, so it is there is a fuzzy line there that you can still train unsupervised techniques um, if the process of the unsupervised model deciding on how to group things into clusters is computationally expensive, then you'd train it first. Right. Yes. Um, and, and yes, like you might want something that'll just run real quick for uh, future data. And you want it to run the same way for future data. That, that would be where the training comes in. Um, yes. And then in the future, uh, the new ones would be faster to put into clusters, for example. So yeah, you're training. There are clusters here, and then you. We'll talk about it more on the uh, exact techniques, but yes, there there are unsupervised techniques that still you would want to kind of bake in. This is what we mean when we run it for any future data. Um, so yes, in this notation section, they have lots and lots and lots of details about how they do things. Um, if something is confusing, you can come back here. I always love it because you know there's always some level that they just assume you know. And um, I don't know everyone's statistics background, but the um, two symbols that they that they you know used quite a bit is the uh, I actually don't know the name for the symbol, the in symbol. Um, that when you see this, it means, you know, like if you see A in X, this just means that A is in the set X. And then the other one is the, it's actually, they talk about, or somewhere where I was reading, talks about, it's not actually an epsilon, but people use epsilon a lot. Um, it's a set symbol that I can't, I'm not sure what, I didn't. So I have this book, uh, Mathematical Notation, a guide to engineers or for engineers and scientists, that is really great because like it's got an index by what letter does it look like, and you can look up symbols by what they kind of look like. Um, I find this very helpful to have sitting around. And so, for example, I was like, I think that R means real number, right? And I could uh, look this up and find, okay, the fancy R is on page 13, and um, look that up. So yeah, element of, duh, that's why it's an E looking symbol. I think you are right. Um, thank you, uh, Kim Tai Kim. So yes, uh, I think it, it does come from, oh, or is it, well, that's a different E. The Euler E is a different E, right? Or is this also a Euler E? Anyway, in any case, uh, that means is an element of, or it's in. Um, <laughs> the set membership symbol. All right. And then also the R means real numbers. So um, 
it'll be uh they were just saying you know a is in real numbers or a is in this set of this larger set of real num or uh thing that is made up of real numbers um okay so i think let's see i there were lots of things coming through in chat i want to see what i missed um element of that yeah, belongs to all right uh it's not yet and yes so the the book um well you can get to everything via that uh r4ds.io slash islr and then the book's website is statlearning.com oh the notation book that i will i'll put a link to that in the um in the slack or if someone already has it yes mathematical that is it um i got this the someone mentioned it on twitter and i was like oh my god i want that book because every once in a while you're reading a paper and they you know it's something that is known in their field but i'm not necessarily in their field so yes um, and yes, there are plenty of things online for it too. I just like having the, the reference to flip through. All right. Um, so what have we gotten ourselves into? What is this book? Uh, chapter two is kind of a, a more complete uh, like definition of what we're getting into. It's going through um, a lot of terminology and main concepts for statistical learning. Uh, chapters three and four are looking at some of the classical methods um, which are still very useful methods. Uh, step chapter five is going to talk about resampling techniques, which we will use to choose the best methods. And then uh, six is basically modern updates to the stuff in three and four. And then seven plus, I didn't go into a lot of detail about what that is because that's a long time from now, but it's stuff beyond linearity. It's a lot of all kinds of you know tree models and all kinds of funky, funky things. Um, I think. All right. And then the last uh, thing that I have prepped is that there is this package, ISLR2, um, all uppercase, that if you install that package that has uh, most of the data, it has the data that isn't already in base R. Um, so you can use that to just get everything that you need. Also, as we build this book, um, the, the book is built like a package and so it has dependencies so we can put dependencies in and if you just do this install installation of the book it will install all the dependencies so that would include islr2 right now um that will make more sense as we go forward but if you do that th that will work and then just remove that package you know click the x or type remove packages because it isn't really a package there's no useful package information there but you can use that to install all of its dependencies um, and that is, yeah, we will have videos here after the meeting, but that's, a, that's what I have. Um, I would love any, any thoughts on, I don't know, like what you're hoping to learn, something you found interesting in this chapter one, anything like that. Oh, and also who wants to do chapter two? That's an important, uh, or the beginning of chapter two, at least. <laughs> I won't call. I'll foolishly volunteer. Excellent. Thank you. I will I will be available to ping and chat with and, and help you through it. Um, but I was really hoping someone else would, would do it because there are you know only 13 chapters and a whole bunch of us. So uh, spreading it out is good. I've, I've read it and it's a lot. <laughs> okay. And so I'm a college university professor and so I'm, I'm used to preparing slides. Okay. Any, any thoughts on how badly I can walk on their copyright by like <laughs> quoting and stuff in um, slides? Probably, so we are in slightly more like danger around that than a university professor is likely to be, but not a lot more. So like, don't, don't use big sections of the book. Um, okay. okay. Uh, but yeah, like somewhat is fine. Um, it's not, so I think this one is a little bit, 
uh, we should be a little bit more careful. It's not like one of the books that's developed as a website, um, but just just be don't be too bad. Um, cool. Did I? That shouldn't say Git GitHub. So I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I had a typo there. It's install packages. It's just a it's a CRAN package. Um, so I I wrote install GitHub. That should be install packages. Um, not sure why. I guess I was in the in thinking about this one. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Ryan has a good question that I always feel like with these things of. You know, he says, let's say it's been many years since my last traditional or undergrad stat class. Will I survive ISLR or should I brush up a bit? I think, I think you'll be fine. I hope you'll be fine because I haven't had an actual stats class in quite a while either. Um, I did take, or I did go through the book that we did, um, Practical Stats for Data Scientists. Um, this one does not have a free online version. So that's um, a bit annoying for this. But uh, yeah, I think it'll be fine. Um, it is aimed more at the, I mean, it's like the idea of the things more than the stats of the things. And hopefully we'll learn some stats as we go. Um, we'll see how it goes. So there will be things like, you know, that was where um, the reason I made sure to call out these symbols is if you have not had a SES class recently, you might be reading that and go, what? I don't, I don't understand what that sentence says. So um, there probably will be some cases of that and uh, hopefully we can help each other through those. Um. <laughs> and yes, otherwise there might be some stats 101 reviewing. So I will show, or do a real quick um, demo of, uh, we're gonna fix this right now so that you can see that it shouldn't be too intimidating to use uh, GitHub. Um, for this particular thing, uh, so I'm just gonna fix the typo. Um, you won't be able to commit to main and you'll actually have to fork it and it'll tell you what to do. But if you just click edit, it will work like this. And um, you can you can make changes. If you see an error in, in uh, my presentation or another presentation, you make the change oops, and you say, what just happened? Did it not? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. You'll, you'll fix it, you say create change, and then you will create a pull request. And that a pull request is saying, hey, John, pull this into the main repository. It's a weird term, but this is a your 30 second intro to GitHub. Um, it will then run this check where it actually builds the book and makes sure that it actually works. And if that check passes, then someone can review it and um, push it into the actual, um, the book and then once that actually happens it will so um oh someone jonathan thank you jonathan jonathan has approved this and so uh once the check's complete um i'm curious if it's just not done yet some checks haven't completed but it's still telling me that i can um so yeah that'll be set to where it won't let me result um merge it without it completing the check, but right now it would let me merge it. And once the check completes, it'll merge in, the book will rebuild, and that that note site will have the completed or the fixed note. So if you go look at the notes in about 10 minutes, it'll be all set. Um, all right, so that's it that I have. I think it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming in. So not surprising, this wasn't a real chapter that it's not going to take up the full hour, but going forward, I would uh, plan on everything taking the full hour. Uh, these chapters are not light for sure. So, all right, I will see everyone on the Slack. Bye. Thanks everyone, see you. Thanks, John, thanks everyone. Thank you.